Let's pick right back up where we left off at the end of part one. Now below the apps is a block that identifies the current vehicle and trailer assigned. Below that is the inspection icon. This is what you'll use when you have a roadside inspection. When you tap the button, it will prompt you to enter a four-digit PIN number. This is to lock the device in inspection mode so the inspector can only access what he or she is required by law to be able to look at. When you review your logs, you'll see violations highlighted in red. But in inspection mode, nothing is highlighted for the inspector. The PIN protects you from the inspector being able to search through areas of your ELD that may highlight violations for you to address and correct. In inspection mode, it is up to the inspector to find them. You can use any four numbers, just remember what four they are, or you can choose no PIN if you're trusting. When you hand the device to the inspector in inspection mode, they can do their inspection and transfer any files they deem necessary. By tapping compliance print, they are able to view your logs and ask questions about them. When they hand the tablet back to you, you then remove it from inspection mode by tapping exit. If you have set a PIN at that point, you'll be prompted to re-enter the PIN to get out of inspection mode and be returned to the dashboard. The Settings button allows you to check for updates, change your password, send feedback to the developers if you encounter a bug, and review the information entered into the system that your logs are built upon. You'll also notice the bottom navigation toolbar for convenient access to other areas of the app. The three bar or hamburger icon on the right takes you into some additional settings and shortcuts to assets, inspection mode, main driver settings, other apps, and also a logout link. Dark mode is preferred by some drivers at night. Some just find it easier on the eyes. Now let's dig in a little deeper to the HOS section. We can easily see that my duty status is on. We can see the hours of driving time and cycle time I have left. We can see the rule set that I'm under. And we can change it, for instance, if I cross a border and now need to be under a Texas rule set. I can view my cycle recap in more detail, and I can view the exemptions that are available to me. Your administrator will populate the exemptions that they deem necessary for you to do your job. To take an exemption, simply tap to start the exemption and enter an annotation, then tap Apply. I'm under this exemption until I turn it off. You will notice all of the statuses are now grayed out on the HOS screen and there is a notification that I'm currently under an exemption. Let's just take a quick look at changing a rule set. Simply select the rule set that you should be under. Now let's go ahead and stop the exemption we were under. If you have access to personal conveyance, your administrator will have a mileage limit set 
and exceeding this limit will put you back on duty and driving. So be mindful of any limit set. When you begin to drive, you will automatically be put into driving status. There's no way that I can show you this in the demo since I'm not actually driving. But when you begin moving, the four status icon buttons will disappear. The countdown window will become larger, so it's the only thing that you're viewing while driving. When you come to a stop, the workday and cycle details will reappear until you're moving again. Anytime you're approaching a violation, the system will alert you in time to stop. When you take breaks and at the end of your workday, it's very important to set your status to off-duty or sleeper berth if that's appropriate for you. If you just stop driving, after five minutes, you will be placed in the on-duty status five minutes ago. And you'll stay in on-duty status if you neglect to manually press the off-duty button. This will create violations that you will then need to correct by adding logs. If someone else drives the vehicle, you will have their logs assigned to you, and you will then need to make corrections to your logs, or in some cases request your administrator to set those logs to be ignored, as they can't be removed once they're assigned to you. The middle icon on this screen displays and allows you to make edits to your logs. The information section here is telling me I have logs that require action. Some will be the ones I neglected to accept when logging in. When I tap here to review, it takes me to the specific issues that require attention. After correction, the warning no longer appears. In this instance, I had a missing location. It's clearly marked on my log. I can look and see where I was before and after and make the appropriate edit. You'll notice on the daily graph, the bars appear in different colors. Green are verified logs. Yellow are logs that have been edited and need to be verified again. These may have been edited by you or by your administrator. Any changes made to your log by your administrator must be verified by you before they become the official log. Gray logs have not yet been verified and red indicates a violation has occurred. Green and white diagonal stripes will indicate a yard move or personal conveyance on the grid. You can see now that there's no longer a warning up here indicating that something needs to be corrected. If you ever need to make edits to your logs, simply tap the log that needs to be edited to open the edit screen. Automatic driving logs cannot be edited. Other logs will give you access to the fields that can legally be edited. In no case can a log be removed, but your administrator can set a log to be ignored. All edits require an annotation giving the reason for the edit or ignore. If you try to save an edit without an annotation, you'll be prompted to add it. When we return back to the log, we can see that the change has been completed. You can also add a log. 
say I forgot to log off duty and need to add that. I do that by tapping the Add button and completing the form to add the log. At the top right of this screen is another setting gear icon. These are just settings that have been moved. Eventually, that will probably be removed from the application or possibly replaced with something else. And the red triangle icon on the upper right indicates a problem. When you see that, tap on it to see what the problem is. In this case, I have no GPS signal because the engine is off while I'm driving the desktop rather than actually in the vehicle. Finally, if the bell lights up, that means you have new messages. We aren't going to go into the messaging features today because not all of our drivers will be using that feature. Now, there may be times when there are two drivers in the same vehicle. In that case, you and the co-driver will need to log into the same device to be assigned to the same vehicle. Tap the driver icon, then add driver. That will open the screen for the co-driver to log in. This driver is my Spanish-speaking alter ego, used to demonstrate that the UI can be displayed in a variety of languages. The new driver will get all of the same prompts to update their logs as the original driver got when logging in. Once logged in, when you tap the driver icon again, both drivers are displayed with their current status, and the one who is driving will have the wheel icon next to their name. To review driver logs, simply select the driver whose logs you want to look at. Driving will continue to be assigned to the driver who has the wheel icon next to their name until the driver is manually changed in this section. When I tap back on my name, we return to my logs. To change drivers, tap the driver icon, tap driver's seat, and select the correct driver. So we've reached the end of our workday and it is time to go off duty. Logging out at the end of your shift will take you through the workflow and help you to remember not to leave anything out. Tap the driver icon and log out. Again, I'm taken to the shipment screen to update any shipments being dropped off or picked up. Next, the trailer screen as you may be detaching your trailer at the end of the day as well. Next, I'm taken to unverified logs again and can verify and certify all of my logs. At that point, I'm prompted to change my status to off-duty and finally to log out. So that is the end of our prepared material. And now we can field any questions that you might have.